Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov, that's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And so let's take a roll call of attendance. Doug. Here. Helly. Here. Gaston. Here. And I am here. Dylan is not. So we're four here with one absent. Um, okay. Number two, public comment. Is there anyone here for general public comment? Um, not specific public comment or public specific com comment specific to something that comes later on the agenda. And let's see if you have public comment, raise your hand, hit the hand button. And I don't see anyone here with public comment. Okay. Um, number three, licenses. A. Special short-term alcohol serving license applications. Uh, first up is SST-22-67, Gabrielle Gould, Wine and Malt, South Common, October 1st, 12 to 5. Gabrielle. Hi. Hi, welcome. How is everybody? Good, how are you? Thank you. Good, so this is the second annual. We did this last year. It is the UMass Wind Ensemble. Um, believe it or not, there's like 75 to 100 of those kids and they all come with their wind instruments. Um, we do not put up a stage. They play on the actual self common on the grass. It will start at 2 p.m. and end at 5 p.m. Um, and we have White Lion Brewery and Artifact Cider will be the two tents there that will be serving alcoholic libations. Um, again, everybody is TIP certified, including us. We will do the same bracelets that we've done for this event last year and for the summer events for the last two years. Um, and I think that that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Okay, great, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Gabrielle? No. Um, is there a motion to approve SST-22-67? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Gaston. Any further discussion? No? All right, let's take a vote. Doug. Aye. Ellie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. The short-term alcohol license is approved. Thank you, Gabrielle, and I hope the event is a great success. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. Bye. Okay. Um, number two, SST-22-53, Bill Pete, Top of the Campus, Inc., Wine and, Wine and Malt, Bowker Auditorium. Oh, next April, 2.30 yes. to 6.30. So, so this, this, was, um, this was part of the batch that we primarily reviewed last week, okay. um, but this particular one just had a, a date error in the application, so it wasn't able to make it to the agenda. But okay. It's, um, exactly the same as all the other Bowker or auditorium ones. Okay, so and he's not here to... No, no. No, it's, it's just we're just... A, okay, this just should have gone with the others. All right, is there a motion to approve SST 2253? Oh, did you have a question, Doug? Or no, I was going to move. Oh, oh, okay, great. I'll move, I'll move to approve the, uh, to, the license SST. All right, thank you, Doug. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, any further discussion? But no. So let's vote. Doug. Aye. Um, Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent and that a license is approved. Okay, great. On to the Common Victuallers license applications. So the first one is Kinney's Nutrition LLC doing business as K's at 377 College Street. And Mr. Keeney is here and everyone got a copy of the license application and welcome Mr. Keeney. And um, so what is the, why don't you let us know what your business is like? Hello, um, so we're just a shake um, and tea and coffee cafe. That's kind of the easiest way to say it. 
um, everything's powder and tea based and a lot of it's kind of takeout um, and we just serve drinks. That's kind of the quick synopsis of it. Okay. All right, um, thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions about it or any questions about the application? Yes, Doug. Uh, I just have one, and it's actually more for Steve than than uh, the applicant. We're just noting on the on the sheet we were sent, you have the address on it. Um, so you know, you know, stuff, you like to look for where it is in town. And so, thank you for telling us it was three seventy seven uh, College Street. Um, but it wasn't on the it wasn't on the application we were sent. So I didn't know if that was an artifact of the of the actual application process or not. I mean, this is something to hold up. Yeah, that uh, thanks for pointing that out. That's a um a, a specific button to press to include that on the uh, export. And I must have missed that one on that one. So okay, thank just, you for I, the I, reminder. I, and I will be a bit more mindful next time. Yeah, I just want to make sure that wasn't something that was missed in the application, which would cause us trouble later on. But yeah, yeah, that did make that in there for the uh, for the full application. So. Great, thank you. Great. Any other discussions? I mean, questions? No, is there a motion to approve uh, the common VIC for? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Any further discussion? No? Okay, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye, that is four to zero with one absent and the common victuals license is approved. Thank you so much for coming in Mr. Keeney and hope that it goes well. Thank you, have a nice one. You too. Okay, the next one up is Z and G Restaurant Incorporated doing business as Lao Hu Tong 63 Main Street. Is someone here for that, Steve? Um, I just Sam might be. Um, uh, oh, well, there he Sam, is. are you are you here to uh, present this application? Uh, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Welcome. Um, okay, thank you. Because yeah. this is my first time using the Zoom meeting, so uh -huh. okay. So our our result is kind of like we want to make Chinese food faster. We don't want people kind of like waiting so long, kind of. So every person coming to our the restaurant, they just need a kind of five to ten minutes for order the food. Oh, that's wow. the reason. That's the reason we don't want to kind of like put any alcohol in our restaurant. We just sell some soda and the milk and the juice because right now it's kind of the like faster stuff. So that's our restaurant's opinions. Oh, that sounds that sounds great. Um, thank you. Does anyone have any questions about the new restaurant going in on Main Street, Lao Hutong, or any questions about the application? No. Yes, Doug. I'm curious, um, have they opened or when are they looking to open? Oh. You mean the window? No, it's not open yet. No. Yes. I mean, what, what's the question of that? When would you like to open? When are you expecting to open? Oh. So our plans will be open around November. November? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. per perfect. Thank you. Um, if there are no other questions or comments about the application, I will entertain a motion to approve this common pictures license. Uh, Sam, could I just get your uh, oh, full name sorry. for the record in the minutes? Yes. What's your What's your full name? Oh, my full name is Sam Don. You mean? My English name or Rails name? Um, Sam <laughs> Dong, that's fine. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the, uh, the application CV 101. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Well, second. Thank you, Hallie. Any further discussion about this application? If not, then we'll take a vote. Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote hi four to zero, uh, four to zero with one absent. This application is approved. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank and you. Thank I you hope guys. Good luck with everything. Good luck, yes. Sam. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. The next one up is Ann King doing business as Amherst Inn, two fifty seven Main Street. So I don't believe these uh these two businesses are owned by a uh, husband and wife couple actually. 
Okay. Um, and um, they are long-term uh, bed and breakfast in Amherst. And I think um, over COVID, there was some, in our switch to OpenGov, there was some uh, miscommunication about um, whether they um, still needed, they, whether they still needed a common VIC license. And um, I think we thought they weren't in business anymore. It switched to Airbnb, but uh, they had not. So um, they do. And he, they came in the other day and um, we stored that all out. So they are renewing their common VIC license for this year. Okay, great. Uh, Doug? Just a couple other questions. So given that, um, you know, do they have, uh, I presume if they're not an Airbnb, that they have an in-holders license and the other, uh, you know, associated and tenant licenses? Did they renew yes, they, those? They, I believe one of them has food service and that does have um, a, a bed and breakfast food license type from the health department. Mm -hmm. um, that's been in effect. And then um, the um, the in-holders license is, is kind of, Integrated in the common vic. That's another one of those one of those things that's uh, not really clear in Chapter 140. But I think um, the common vic license would suffice. I think we do have different language that prints out if it's uh, an in holder. So, okay, great. Are they here tonight or? It does not no. look like it. No. Okay. So, um, is there any questions? We approve them together, Doug. <laughs> I'll yes. move to approve uh, common vic license 104 and common vic license 105. Great. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Um, is there a, any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Um, Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye, four to zero with one absent. The motion, the common victualers licenses are approved. Sorry, I flipped over into my friends of the library brain there for a second. <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay, great. So um, that's everything. And we have two discussion items. Uh, everyone got the lunch cart regulations and the guidelines slash regulations for liquor licenses. And um, they both look good. And why don't we start with the lunch carts, Steve? So I noticed that you um, moved away from mobile food establishment and clearly more clearly defined what a lunch cart was and what a food truck was, which was great. Yeah, that's something that um at least uh, has been really uh, haunting me a, a, a bit is um, how to define these uh, godforsaken things. And right. um, I guess, you know, why not just call them what they are? And it's um, a little bit cumbersome to kind of you have that dual terminology throughout the whole thing, but it's probably better than making up some kind of term or using right. food establishment, which is confusing compared to health. So um, okay. there weren't that many changes through this. It was just kind of some of that uh, nomenclature <coughs> thing. Um, I think um, if, if, if everybody else agrees, a good plan would be to kind of wrap both of these up today and then um, hold a public hearing to approve them next week. I know Marion had been thinking we would um, hold um, just a, a meeting just, just focused on that because it would be back to back weeks because of the way there's five Thursdays in September. Um, and then that would be a short meeting and um, that would be out of the way and we could move on to our other, other projects. Um, so anyway, without further ado, um, bunch of carts and food trucks, um, I think that should cover it. Mm -hmm. um, I did add the suggestion for 80, for a, a, somebody suggested a reduced fee if um, the applicants issued a short-term license that year. And so I figured knock 20 bucks off probably makes sense. Um, they're adding food trucks there. Um, this is just something, uh, and actually I meant to change this, but there is no, as chapter 130 is alcohol licensing. That wouldn't apply, but um, we would have, um, just, this is just some, some boilerplate to uh, to make sure that it doesn't kind of redefine anything that's similar to what we have in other regulations. Um, I figured a lunch cart food truck license, it, it does slightly roll off the tongue. So uh, we would just call it that from now on. Um, I do have a better definition for mobile food establishment. I got from um, the health department, which they use in the food code. Um, I got that today, so I didn't have a chance to put it in, but um, I think I will plan on replacing that and making it a little bit tighter because um, Rob pointed out it's kind of a circular definition with these three. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of some um, nomenclature changes here, kind of typography type things. Um, I added this provision that um, if it's within a municipal parking district, it can be administratively approved by the building commissioner. And um, I did like this. I, I do like the idea of um, doing some kind of posting there. So I figured 10 days would probably be, be adequate. Um, and um, 
a manner prescribed by the board gives us a little bit of flexibility to um, figure out how exactly we would do that. Um, but um, Rob was Rob liked that idea too, and maybe we can see if we can scrounge something together for that that people could borrow if they wanted to do it. Um, and then I also added that the board can review or vote to re revoke the uh, permission at other location in case there is some kind of big controversy or problem. It wouldn't just be ongoing forever. Um, this is a little clarification from the uh, collector's department just to make sure that it's clear that if they take up more than one space, they would have to pay for um, for all the ones they're taking up. And this was actually an interesting question. Um, I was going to add the, um, you know, we have that kind of semi-standardized non-criminal disposition language we've used in other regulations. And um, I don't actually know if there are any any um, fines or anything authorized. Um, if you look in the general bylaws of authorizing some other types of licenses, they will have a provision for non-criminal disposition, but in the general bylaws, there actually isn't even anything um, authorizing the lunch cart license. The only reference to it is just the, uh, the section setting the fees. Um, and this is actually something that's kind of been um, confusing in other circumstances because a lot of um, the, the different license types in chapter 140, and there's all kinds of, of crazy different different obscure things. I mean, it's just if you get way back there, there's licenses covering, you know, certain types of um, nightclub entertainment that allows, um, you know, under 18, but over 14 in after six o'clock on a Sunday and all kinds of different things like that. Um, and it, a lot of them are um, only in effect if the town chooses to um, adopt them. But I don't, I don't know if there's any real centralized registry of what the town's chosen to adopt. You'd probably just have to go through every town meeting record ever and um, see what is or isn't adopted. I think it's probably a safe bet that the town did adopt the um, this type of licensing, but whether or not we could actually issue fees or fines without um, some kind of different action from the town council is an interesting question. So I think we're gonna have to um, get in touch with Brian Riley and um, see what he thinks about that. Okay, Doug? Um, just a couple things. Uh, I think on that last point relative to whether the town has adopted or not adopted certain provisions of uh, Mass General Law, I think when the, uh, when the charter uh, was revised and the people were going through the bylaws and, and reviewing, um, they made it a point to look at any and all action of, of town meeting and, and adoption of those of those kind of things. So I think there's a kind of a laundry list of those at the very beginning of the of the new charter or of the bylaws. So that's just an FYI. Um, the other thing, uh, just a typo type thing in section seven, the second paragraph uh, and rear bumper of other other vehicles. So there's two others in there. Um, one on either side of that thing. Uh, and then I think the other thing I wanted to just ask about a little bit where it says short-term license applications within the municipal parking district may be administratively approved by the building commissioner. I don't know, the only concern I have there, we've you know sort of ceded our authority there. Um, maybe it should have, and I'm just posing this as a question for the group to think about is uh, if there isn't a, uh, license commission meeting scheduled to be able to uh, rule on or, or grant the, the license. Because because uh, what would happen is that they may be administratively approved, which means, uh, you know, I think our intention was is that if we're not meeting, we wouldn't want to hold somebody up from, from getting approval. Mm -hmm. But as this currently is written, it gives uh, building commissioner uh, our authority to make all these decisions. Um, and I don't know if that's what we intended or not. Um, so I, I, I mean, I think, you know, I, I think it's a question for the board, just do, are we okay with that, uh, that he makes all those decisions within that municipal parking district? Because that gives him a lot of authority to grant those um, without consideration, without us having a conversation. If we have a meeting scheduled, then we can obviously make our judgment known. Um, so I, I just posed a question to the group about their comfort or discomfort with that particular uh, line in the line in the regs. It's a good it's a good question, um, Doug. I I guess that the municipal parking district seems um, 
uh, kind of fairly up for grabs and, and not controversial. I, I wonder if what we can do is add a proviso at the end of this sentence that says, um, subject to the authority of uh, the board to review such approvals. Yeah, I think that that would be helpful because I, I, I think our intention with this was, oh, we're having a meeting in two weeks. Somebody wants to do a, a thing, you know, on a weekend in between one of our meetings. Yeah, yeah. You know, we want to grant the authority of, of the commissioner to sort of make a choice, right? Um, at the same time, I don't, I'm not sure we wanted to do every single one, right? So I think that's... Right. So, so we don't want to create a loophole where uh, it's like the recess appointments that if you... Mm -hmm you know to go uh, administratively, then you, we can never review it, uh, but it could be approved and we could get complaints or, or something from a restaurant owner there and, uh, and then maybe go back and revisit it. So I, I, I would be comfortable as, as long as we can go back and, and review those approvals that, uh, for, from my standpoint. Yeah. Uh, Steve, what do you think? Yeah, I, th I think that's a good point. And also yeah. maybe something in about notice. I mean, I think um, at least what was, um, what was in my head with this is that there's just going to be a lot of, you know, if we have the, the Rotary Club fair coming in, there might be three or four that are just, you know, parked, you know, trucks parked there, or there might be um, you know, any kind of, you know, festival or things like, thing like that. There might be, you know, a, a little bit of volume coming in. Um, but I, I think that would be good to include some kind of um, review or, I mean, uh, or uh, notif notification or both. Uh, this, this would be just short term, which I think is restricted to 72 hours. Yes, said, yeah, so. it's three days. And it just, so you're thinking like if there's a, like somebody comes in on a Thursday and wants to set up or a Friday morning and wants to set up on Saturday. and Which, do, yeah, need. which does happen all the time. And, right, and right. Because um, it was, this wasn't really fully enforced before struggle to even get them through health too. And there was right. no chance they'd ever make it to a licensed commission meeting if they had to. Right. Um, but, so this is for the, the like you said the the what is that thing called the farmers market on the weekend the farmers you, market is a good example who should then, be licensed but they're currently not is that correct yeah, yeah yeah okay all right well I think I'm I would be fine with that language and everyone else seems to yeah yeah what were you um, envisioning for for the notice or, or review uh, language guest on um. Well, just to, to, to double check here, if these are only short term licenses, then what does it mean to be able to review? Um, uh, it, would, it would be that we get notice, like uh, an email from you that this has been approved and then we've got whatever days between then to organize and, and review. Is that the only space of action? Um. I mean, you could certainly review it after the fact or, you know, some people would get it in ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, um, review after the fact of the of the of, of the license being approved administratively or after the fact of the event or, or of the day of the short term. Um, I guess it depends on um, on what the timing is. And, I, and it's also an interesting suggestion from Doug of whether this would be the defaults or whether this would be only if there isn't enough time. Um, I, I mean, I'm fine. I, I think that it, it really does make sense if a food truck has the initiative to show up at town hall that they're, they're one and done, you know, they don't have to, they don't, they don't have to have the weight and, and, um, you know, think that something is up for grabs when it would really be approved as a matter of course. Um, so I, um, I think that if we say that subject to um, notification of the board and its authority to review, we, we leave open um, we leave open the possibility of action. It might be that after the fact, we actually instruct the um, uh, the, the the town that this particular block is one where we actually want it to come to us because there have been issues or something like that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's fine. Is everybody else okay? The... okay. Yeah, if I may. Yes. A couple, couple things. I think on the, to go back a bit, I think the, uh, the, uh, 
food service uh, as part of the farmer's market. I think once upon a time, they did actually get uh, perhaps a, a license from the select board, but I don't recall exactly. I know that we got liquor licenses for the people that are doing a service there, but I can't remember the food. Um, that's just an aside. Uh, the, um, I think the other thing I was gonna say about it is that I think the, uh, the open meeting law will, will limit our ability to do review you know, in other words, if it's, you know, if it's Wednesday, they drop it off and we find out about it Thursday, you know, we won't have a meeting if it's on Saturday, right? So we'll have to right. do it for action kind of thing, but that's okay. I think it, 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 it still gives us the opportunity to provide feedback to the building commissioner about, hey, these, under these circumstances, we're going to give you advice about how you administratively approve these. So I think we still have that option. It's just, you know, the open meeting law will limit our, our time frames that we can operate in. Okay. But. And I think again, the, the intention here is not to, you know, create more hoops for people unnecessarily. It's and I, and I think that kind of guidance does have precedence. I mean, um, Article 14 in the zoning bylaw, which, if you're not familiar, is um, a provision that some certain things. I mean, even um, opening a restaurant would all have to go to um, the planning board for site plan review, which is a pretty big burden actually for for um, people trying to start up something. And um, Article 14 allows that I think that uh, uh, food, you know, restaurant service, retail, and um, there's a third minor one too. Those three categories to be administratively approved by the building commissioner, and he he's taken um, kind of guidance from the ZBA, um, you know, not to go to certain, you know, not to approve a restaurant to be open until 4 a.m. or something without actually going to them. So, okay, great. So did we go through the whole thing then? Was there any other questions that anyone had about, oh, we have, here's our pre-approved locations. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, it's kind of- And then the 10 day, here. the 10 day notice or notification, um, location ability, parking fees we talked about, availability. Um, let's see. I'm gonna have to go through this again to Sure right. yeah okay 10 foot separation um any other questions by was there anything else we didn't cover steve i think that's um that about it? it for this one i think this will be the question okay. um i guess one question i would pose to you is if this uh, if i don't hear back from council or if it's um if if it seems some kind of complicated thing would the board want to still um adopt the, the regulations in these form and maybe come back and edit it with with more more detail in here or just hold off on the whole thing i think we could probably approve it and then go back is that all right just so that we get them yeah I'm happy to just get them done and that yeah revoke or renew failure to comply yeah i mean i think we've got time we've only got one lunch cart really so, yeah or food truck whatever so yeah let's just do that and you will email the consult tomorrow or uh, soon, yeah, soon, yeah, I, I will I will e email him okay, after great. The meeting or tomorrow, yeah, and try to see what he thinks. And that thanks for that tip, Doug, about it um potentially being in the beginning of the charter because that would save me or somebody else a lot of research. Okay, that's great. So we can oh yeah, sorry, Doug, go ahead. I'm gonna make a motion to uh, adopt the uh, regulations for the operations of lunch carts and food trucks in public way as amended at the meeting of September 29th, 2022. Oh, great. Can, can we do I, that I now? do think we have to have a public <laughs> hearing officially. Oh, do we? Okay. Oh, okay. So we'll, right. we'll notice that for next time. Next time. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to fix all those uh, missing missing food trucks at the beginning, so. Okay. All um, right, great. Well, that, that'll be something to put on the calendar. So hold that thought, Doug. I can save it for next time. <laughs> save it for next time. All right, guidelines for if there are no other questions about lunch cart slash food trucks, guidelines, regulations, slash regulations for liquor license, liquor licenses. Is that it? Yes. So um, licensee of alcoholic beverages. Okay. So um, one thing I left open was the definition of acting manager because um I oh, was right. hoping, we talked about that last yeah time. i actually yeah. mentioned this because dylan called me about an hour ago saying he might be late or might not be able to make it and i was hoping to get a little bit of his insight because i have never worked in this industry 
but um, I get the impression at certain places it can also often be a little bit flexible who is the manager and if there's actually a titled position. Um, so I guess we'll come back to that anyway, and we'll go through the rest of this. Okay. Um, of any changes? Really, not oh, much. But Doug, Doug has his hand up. Doug I, and then Gaston. I was going to suggest that, and just the following is that, um, you know, there's the manager as opposed to li on the license. And that's obviously someone we hope is is regularly there. But I think acting manager, but they're not going to work every hour. The place is open. So I think, I think what we can do with with acting managers is, is just, you know, indicate that someone should be designated as the sort of lead person, the manager of the of the facility at any given time. And so that's really all we're trying to identify there. So I think we keep the definition of that fairly simple and and say, uh, and, and so, you know, when push comes to shove, if there are two people working and they're both, you know, co uh, capable of, uh, you know, they're both capable of, of, of being titled a manager, they may not either one really be sort of the lead per person or not. More often than not, if you have you know more than a couple of people, somebody's going to be the the senior most in you know person. Um, but you know, you know, it, it's really about you know the them um, identifying at any given time you know who that active person is on a on a given shift. And it may be that we're, we're what we be, should be doing is saying someone must be designated in that role. Mm -hmm. um, if the if the you know manager of record on the license is not you know not there someone should be designated as an acting manager and, and carry the responsibilities of that person. Because mm -hmm. I think that was our intent with that acting managers. Someone's got to kind of hold the responsibility. Somebody's got the keys to the to the store to lock it up when it's not done, you know, and that may be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I definitely, uh, yeah, wrap my mind around that concept, but how to describe it, you know, you could say, you know, whoever the employee is who is, um, you know, the highest ranking there, but we wouldn't want to necessarily wrap in like a silent partner who happens to be there that day or something. Um, I guess you could call it the the employee, um, you know, actively supervising the service of uh, alcoholic beverages. On the Where does the term show up in the in the regulation or in the, in the guidelines? I think we were putting it, I don't know if it's actually in here. I think we were kind of, um, I think it, it, we say it's an underemployed, the manager of record, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. During this is, I think this is what I put in kind of with that, uh, with that question, but mm -hmm. we could certainly rephrase it. Uh, uh, Okay, well, um, I guess the if if a sentence like this is fine, then we don't need the definition. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's also true. So I, I I I think that there we avoid issues trying to define it tightly. I mean, what we're saying is that somebody who's there mm -hmm. and is quote unquote a manager has has this training, right? Right. So I, I mean, I, I think that that is pretty much what we're concerned with. And I'm not sure we, we need to try to be more technical about it. Is that acceptable to everybody? Yeah. All right. So wait, can you go back up to manage to we did define manager in here or is that not necessary? Is that what you're saying, Gaston? Like oh, there's manager man manager of record and then there's manager which is just the employee who happens to be in charge right right i mean in right. that in that usage it was a lowercase m so oh a lowercase m so you don't term and and i don't know if and um so that's not necessary i i don't think so and i guess manager of record in, uh kind of pulls in the okay um the the law uh that's applicable right yeah, I don't, I don't know I if that so. actually is officially called a manager of record, but I think we define it. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. Manager of record. A full-time manager. Right. And it has to be approved. But, uh, I mean, I, you know, there it is.
I guess what is maybe confusing is um, using the term manager here. Um, I think maybe we should define it as manager of record and yeah, you know, yeah, here. Um, um, and so it's vague elsewhere. There it's okay. It's the, um, uh, you know, the, um, an authority um, uh, as approved by the board. Maybe you could put that in that first sentence and then, it, and then define it. Um, so at, uh, the, at the end of that first sentence, as approved by the board, right? You, you, no one can get a license without having us approve a manager. Is that right? Right. right. Yeah. And then what you can do is just do um, uh, parens quote manager of record. And then above in the, if you want to have the definition, you can just say manager of record as defined in section 5.01. This is why we have multiple lawyers on this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dylan. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. There we go. That All solves right. that problem nicely. Great. Um, so I am going to, well, I guess this was just a change from um, from what was in there to what was already approved on the on the license text. Um, yeah, I guess, Dylan, now that you're here, does that last <laughs> sentence in 5.02, does that mean something in a bar setting? Such a training course. Um, hold on. Is this referring to? Well, I guess we, we're not saying tips. Um, yeah, not saying tips certified specifically. But, but I guess maybe a, a, after that first sentence, Steve, it could say um, like server training course, such as tips. We want to define this maybe. we have server training certificate here alcohol management or server training course is that is, i mean is, is this ambiguous would this be you know I, I went to the uh the school where they taught me to hold three silver platters in my hand yeah. at once it, and, yes yeah it yes is, it is um so can you just take server training course out maybe and because that's what we're is yeah is there there's got to be some kind of um trade name or, or not a trade name but some specific um name for those types of courses um is it alcohol service certificate or something like that i'm going to google tips really quickly and see what they okay probably not treasury and treasury inflated protection securities but i mean i think we're fine i, I saying uh like tip certification or similar or equivalent yeah or equivalent something yeah. like that that way yeah. it's specific but not you know constraining it to specifically be tip certification i think yeah the, the, the word the, the language they use is um uh alcohol training and certification program Do we want to be the ones who say that it's equivalent? Um, I mean, I, I guess. Could we could say recognized by the board? Or recognized by the A. I mean, I'd throw it off to the ABCC almost okay. recognized. Yeah. Do they, I don't, do they recognize those things? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like the manager of record has to have a tip certification, but maybe that's us. But I thought that that was a requirement. I think tips is, um, I know we put it in some, I think we put it in um, the short term, the short term language, but I, I did, I think I tr we tried to write it to not make it only tips because I think that is a private corporation. So I'm sure there's some kind of other competitor they have. Um, 
Yes, Tips is, according to their website, the global leader in alcohol server and seller training. <laughs> <laughs> But interestingly, on their Massachusetts page, they actually have the state uh, uh, shield. Hmm. You know, so there's there's a certain level of uh, state, uh, you know, acknowledgement of them. Okay. Are we? Yeah. Okay. So training and certification program. Uh, Alcohol training and certification program. Uh, how is that? I guess if it comes up, if it ever comes up, we'll we'll judge it when it comes up. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that sounds good. So I'm going to um, approve these insertions so we can just see how it reads because it's a bit crowded now and I want to make sure that I reflected um, what you guys were looking for. Okay, I think that looks good. Did everybody read it? Oh, uh, manager of record, you can capitalize. Yes. How would we define who the principal representative is? Principal representative of the licensee. Well, what does that mean? Is that, is that the, the owner or the applicant? Um, I mean, I, th I can't think of any liquor license we have that's not issued to a corporation. And certainly there'd be some of those silent partners who don't have anything to do with it, really. Um, or, uh, well, I, uh, agent of the licensee. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be like an attorney or something at the... Right. I, I think that the, uh, I think we define licensee up above and it's sort of any and all that, you know, Part parcel of the holder of the license. I mean, an individual right. licensee, each member of a partnership licensee, and each officer, director, manager, et cetera, et cetera, there. So, okay. So it's got to be someone who's listed on the license. So it can't see, they can't appoint a representative and say, right. This would this mean that um, for uh, someone who's on the application for the Drake, to... every member of the Chamber of Commerce would have to get a TIP certificate. Right. That's, that's yeah. where... That's what I'm thinking about is that this now right. includes everybody and I'm not sure we need to have everybody, but we certainly right. need to have some of them. <laughs> Maybe just the manager of record and any managers of um, alcohol service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came in a little late. Have we defined uh, acting manager? What, what was the... Um... Oh, you we have to see up. section 5.01. It's yeah. defined there. So acting we manager, we ended up um, bypassing because we ended up using um, that just some, what, at least one manager on duty has to have completed it. Uh, yeah. We have the manager of record and that's how we've oh, traditionally been using two. the term manager. Am I correct about that? So that's the official ABCC defined manager. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't, but we don't define manager just uh, like under managers. Uh, outside of that, we just use the term manager and, and, and we all know what that means or? Um, I think it's sort of kept deliberately amb ambiguous and flexible. Oh, we we don't have a definition. I don't know if right. there's a legal definition. And so that's why we were wondering based on your experience, if it 
if it's clear, if that sentence is clear enough, what it means. Okay, so yeah, that's they're not pretty smart. Yeah, I, I think that works. I, I don't think we need to define manager beyond that. I, I think we uh, probably benefit as a board and as a uh, community <laughs> by keeping it a little bit vague. So on um, on this on this question. So I guess um, at the so so this section is that the, when you're applying the individual licensee or the, or the principal representative of the licensee as well as the manager of record have to complete that um, before they apply so or before coming to board for anything really um, would we want to clarify that should just be for a, a new application i mean if somebody's just changing a um a dba or something would we want to get tips from everybody involved um i think it's fair to say a new license The only other case might, well, this is for employees, so never mind. I, I was just going to say that the thing I might suggest in there is, is you know, new applicants transfer. Um, I think if you have a change in manager, but I don't know that that necessarily needs to apply in this circumstance, this particular paragraph. So, yeah, I don't think you need to because there's manager of record there. <clears throat> Actually, just on the topic of manager of record, if I may, um, mm -hmm. I was rereading the very first line where it says, you know, shall point maintain a full time manager. Um, we may need to define full time because um, we have a circumstance where somebody is is you know uh, the manager of record in two different places, and so that would you know the strict reading of that would be eighty hours a week, forty at one and forty at the other. So I I, I don't know how we resolve that. Um, you know I I think. Our intention with putting that is that we want them to be that managing this particular license is their primary job uh, and that they're on those locations and, and doing that management of, of the alcohol license. Um, I think to say full time, unless we define it or express some framework for that, I think we, we kind of invite some, some questions and some pushback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that came up last time too, and we ended up kind of just moving on. But it's a good question. Yeah, because isn't the um, the new places isn't aren't they the managers splitting time yeah. between both yeah. of them? What is that Oyster Bar and Protocol? Are those the new two new ones? And so, is it defined as forty hours a week? Definitely, or I mean that's a generic definition in you know if you look at like the Bureau of Labor Statistics and that sort of thing, it's a forty hour week and eight hour work. Okay. So, broadly defined. I, I, but I mean, there are other definitions of full time. And so we could, instead of saying full time, but we could say something like 20 or more hours a week or 25 hours. A week. I mean, we could set some threshold, you know, if we wanted to. Because um, I think our intention with this, if you know, recall the discussion, is just that it's, uh, it's that they're, primary, you know, sort of work or a significant amount of work is is dedicated to being the manager of, of this license. Um, and that, you know, you didn't want to, we don't want a situation where somebody comes in and they've got 15 places that they own throughout Western Mass and they got one person that's the manager on every single license. Because the reality is they're not going to manage in the way we're expecting them to 15 different places. Um, they're going to delegate that to 14 other people. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And we'd rather have those other 14 people's names on the license. So I think we, we may want to set some sort of threshold here. I'm not sure okay. um, what or how we do that. But I mean, I think we were in a bit of a bind on trying to approve the license for the for those two places. And so, you know, it prompted the conversation, but we didn't 
he has sort of put them to uh, he has sort of specifics for the for that case, but I think it prompted this conversation. So I, I'm not sure what people's thoughts are. I mean, that's just the the, the sense of it I have, and that you know, and I think the intention behind you know the the, the regulation that ABCC has around noting and defining a manager is that that's the person that you know is actively spending their working time managing the details of the license so right um why don't we just delete full time i mean we, when we're when we approve them we can find out what the arrangement is i mean yeah that might be the best i mean it, it's yeah. a little you know a little open-ended in some ways but but i don't want to you know we can you know perhaps continue this conversation sort of think through that a little bit more okay you know, after the fact because i think we we don't want to you know kill ourselves here with this nuance that's okay. going to come up you know once every so often right so flipping through the uh abcc faqs i found the statutory reference to where the manager comes from okay Yeah, so the, it's 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 really about responsibility, not work hours. Right. Okay. Okay, I could have sworn um, seeing something that um, it has to be there for a certain. Maybe I'm mixing that up with something else. I don't know. I just flipped through the FAQs and there was nothing. So. Anyway. Okay. So did we get through all of it or, oh no, um, we're still screen sharing. What else? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was just switching back and forth to show you guys okay. that. Um, One of the issues that, that was a policy question was this police detail um, and who should pay and so on. I guess my, my thought was, why not think of police detail as a kind of punishment? And and so it's like in lieu of paying a fine, they have to pay the police detail. If mm. I mean, we would never ask for a police detail unless there have been problems, right? Right. Yep. I don't know if that if that if that m makes sense is within our authority and or fits the need here, but that was my thought. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Um. That's something Rob flagged when I went over it with him yesterday, too. I mean, we could say that in in lieu of um, uh, in lieu of fines or I don't know. I mean, I, we need something that's going to impose the equivalent of, of a fine. Um, I mean, I guess we don't need we don't need. We just say that a condition on the license is um, is a posting of a detail as, but it's pursuant to a violation that we want to enforce that way. Well, the, yes, other thing, the other thing I would mention is that, you know, and, and this in some ways happens in our downtown now is that, you know, um, it, we might put something in that's like, you know, under advisement of public safety, because sometimes the, the need for those detail officers is not about sort of piss fight, but just you know, numbers of people and traffic safety. And mm -hmm. so that again is a burden they bear. So we may want to put something to the effect that like, if under the advisement of public safety in the town of Amherst, uh, the board reserves the right to uh, impose, you know, uh, the posting of detail officers and that expense will be carried by the, by the, uh, uh, by the uh, license holder. Because I think it, as much as, you know, there may be circumstances where, you know, fights are breaking out or some, that kind of thing. I think, you know, when I, when I think about downtown and the fact that, you know, our police go out and, you know, put up barricades and that sort of thing, that's more about just a general safety of, of people who may be in various states of, of intoxication uh, and just enough to not be, you know, and they're, they're walking, you know, there's no, uh, you know, it's, it's illegal to operate the, uh, you know, motor vehicle under the influence, but you can walk down the street under the influence, uh, you know, to, to a large degree and, and, and 
you know, if a number of people are in a state of, uh, of um, uh, intoxication that, that makes public safety dangerous, whether it be for drivers or for the you know, pedestrians, we want to want to be able to, to step in and ask them to, to help out with that situation. Now, one wrinkle, and this is that uh, I don't, I believe it's the chief's policy not to allow officers to do details at uh, Amherst businesses, or at least Amherst bars. Oh, really? So I, I guess mean, they maybe you mask cop or something, but yeah, or even private security. I mean, it doesn't have to be maybe a police detail. Well, I, I would think in in the in the circumstance of detail officers, I think about in in the circumstance where. Um, I mean, we may be thinking about different things. I'm thinking about a circumstance where they're uniformed and they have, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not on duty per se, but they're getting paid as if they were, um, you know, if you have an event in town, uh, that might need support around traffic. So i you know, many years ago, we did a charity event at Valentine Hall at, at, uh, at Amherst College. But the parking was across the street, and so we had a detail officer to you know make sure people were crossing the street there, uh, crossing uh, Route Nine safely uh, throughout the evening. Um, and that's typically the same kind of detail officer that you know is at uh, you know when the utility company's working on a light pole and they need people to direct traffic, that kind of thing. It's not necessarily always a full fledged you know officer, um, but I think that that I think in terms of that kind of uh, a circumstance. Um, so it's not quite like they're getting, they're not going to get a paycheck from the company. They're going to get their pay from the town of Amherst. We're just asking the, 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 you know, license holder to reimburse the town for that cost. Um, so I don't think it's quite the same, you know, circumstance that, uh, might be what the chief has a, a concern about. Yeah, it's a good point. I'm not sure how uh, what the extent of his his um, opinion is on that, but um, could we could you ask him about that or shoot a quick email and just yeah. see? So you're thinking like there are 100 people in a bar; they all come streaming out across the street, and um, the police have to set up something to keep them everybody safe, and that should be that the cost of that should be borne in part by the business. Who's is that we, the kind of thing? That's that's what who's I'm. Got the who's got the hundred people in the bar in the first place? Yeah, if there if, if there's circumstance, it's not that you know the, the police detail is is necessarily, um, you know, providing bouncer service. It's right. more I think that they're you know inter intervening before fights break out, or more importantly, probably just keeping people safe relative to traffic and uh, you know navigating the sidewalks. And that's okay. what, it's, it's kind of what I'm thinking about. But but it would be interesting to hear what the chief has to say and. You know, there's, there's a nuance there that he's probably um, got that we don't understand, which is would be helpful to know. Okay. Um, uh, colleagues, now that um, Dylan he is here, I wonder if I uh, might um, tap out to go to the high school open house. Oh, sure. I mean, I, with yeah. respect to this document, I mean, the, the, this idea of putting this issue here makes sense to me and, and otherwise I, I, I would be, you know, I would be fine uh, putting this up to a vote if, if that's what you all uh, conclude. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank Sounds you so much. Great. Thanks, Thanks Gaston. Gaston. Bye. Bye. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we can keep this simple. I mean, I can't imagine this ever really happening. Right. They haven't even had the barricades out in probably 10, 15 years. And, um, no. when the drink gets really going, it's going to be a good thing. Um, I, I just think about, you know, the more likely circumstance where we, we're going to ask, uh, uh, you know, uh, a licensee is going to be around, you know, sort of traffic and sidewalk safety, probably more than the other. Because I think if people are doing the right thing with their alcohol service, people aren't getting intoxicated to a point where the, the sort of physical altercations are happening. You know, I think it's more uh, likely to come up in a circumstance where it's like, ooh, there's a lot of people on the sidewalk. What's the right, and is it, 
particularly a business or a couple of businesses that that need that uh, need and probably want some support around some of that stuff. So I think that's, you know, so it's, and it, it's, I, I think it's gonna be driven by, you know, something that the police department notices and says, hey, we really need to do something here. That's where I think this is gonna come, you know, originate from, but. Okay. Okay. That was this, do we wanna keep, kind of keep a little According to and... posting police up the cross. The other thing I would say, I think that reads fine. I think the other thing I'd say is we, if we're thinking about a sort of punitive component to it, um, you know, I think we just, if, if there's violations where they're not taking care of, you know, sort of safety that we think a police details needed, I think we suspend a license or we revoke the license. I mean, you know, yeah. I, mm -hmm. that's, that's the other way to sort of, you know, solve that problem without. Yeah, it. yeah, that's, yeah. All right. Um. We've kind of jumped around a little bit. I, we're near the end, but let's just kind of go through from the beginning and target everything. I don't think there's that much more, but we were on the same page with deleting acting manager, um, manager of record. <laughs> we like that. Mm -hmm. um, we like that. Uh, we like that. So, so yeah. So this for applicants for a newer transfer license. Um, do we want to just make it the manager, the, the manager of record? I, I can't see any way to, to d d divine who a principal representative is. I mean, it's obvious, like so using the Drake as an example, it's obvious that Gabrielle is, but she doesn't really officially have any particular role anymore than any other the more, you know, the board of directors who are silent partners. Right. I think we can take that out. Yeah. Okay. Um, um yeah, no, sorry, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Add a little bit more definition. Um, deleting this. Um, this was the one thing. Um, offenses, that for the purposes of first offense, second offense, is this incidents or counts or charges? I would say incidences, but yeah, I would lean that way as well. Even yeah, if we, me too. I think that that um, it identifies. We had questions about their uh, seriousness in in how they manage their license. So yeah, yeah, you know, we we may not have dropped the hammer on them, but I think we want to keep in mind that they may have had a question before. Yeah, and I guess if it's some ridiculously egregious thing that we can always exceed the guidelines anyway so um yeah we know how to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah how you got this guideline this guidance from kp law right of the of the date range because i was just surprised with both this and with porta how conservative they are with this when the abcc just drops an eight day on um hazel's blue lagoon on yeah. day one yeah i mean he sent me f a couple towns to pick and choose from so yeah i mean i was curious i guess it's really not really concerned um and i i did remove um that they can't the board has to approve them to keep serving food i've um i've never heard that and i don't really see what the issue is as long as they've got the big red sign up in the door that says cannot serve alcohol mm -hmm. i think they'd probably prefer to be closed anyway i don't know that does that make sense to everybody i think we kind of talked about that last time mm -hmm. All right, I think that about does it. Great. I'll go through for proofreading and stuff. Okay. Um, go back to that. All right. Okay. And then we can, should we put this on the schedule of uh, public hearing for next time too? Are you ready for that or is there? I think we're ready for that. Yeah. I mean, I okay. can send, I can try to send around a, um, I guess it's next week. Yeah, but I can try to send a draft around, um, you know, Monday or Tuesday and. Okay. And you know, any last comments, but I think we're pretty much there. I think it's pretty much just proofreading. And the, I think um, yeah, with the KP law, the, the, the fines and penalties for um, the lunch carts, I don't know if we'll get back to that, but I do think it'd be good to just get it over with and amend oh, it later. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So nothing else on guidelines for liquor license decisions. All right, great. So topics not anticipated. Um, so next, actually first, let's go back to something, the bar formerly known as Kaiju, which is now known as the archives. And Steve and I talked a little bit about this. And this is something you said that there's a, an official form that they have to fill out. Their website is working now. So let's see. So apparently the bar Kaiju is not Kaiju anymore and is now something else. And I just wasn't sure if that is something that they could just file like a change of DBA with the clerk or if it had to come before the, the BLC. And Steve wasn't sure. Yeah, it looks like there is a um, there is a change of DBA. So I'll reach out to them and let them know they got to do that. OK, that would be great. Yeah, Doug. I would just suggest is is if it's purely just a change of DBA and mm -hmm. all other factors related to the license and, and hopefully the state regulations this way as well, you know, they can just, you know, notify us is good enough. I, I don't know that we need to drag somebody in front of us to, I mean, right. I, you know, once upon a time when it, was, when it was select board meetings, we did it as sort of an opportunity for people to advertise their new business. But okay. a lot, we have a lot smaller audience with the board of license commissioners and right. the board, not that select board ever had much audience, but still. Um, but, but I mean, I think that's again, a, you know, sort of an administrative thing more than anything else. It, okay. That, that would be my suggestion about that, but. Okay, super. Steve, when you reach out to them, do you wanna just make sure we have an updated manager of record? Yes. Yeah, I, I, um, I believe that's the owner, but I'll definitely double check with them. Okay. And um, I don't really think we have much, I think it's a state requirement that they have to update it, but thankfully, as I'm looking at the application, they don't have to pay the $200 for that, so. Oh, good. It'll okay. be much less annoying. And it's really just two pages. So, okay. Um, thankfully, I don't think that'll be much of a headache for them. Okay, great. Thanks for doing that. Um, and then we have a meeting. So, we're scheduled, we've been doing the first and third Thursdays. And so, since there were three, what, four extra Thursdays in September, our next meeting is the sixth. We were going to do a short meeting to approve lunch carts and Guidelines for liquor license decisions. Is that fine with everybody? Doug? I have a, an, another meeting at five. Oh, okay. It, it's, you know, normally I wouldn't, but I happen to, I, you know, it's a work related thing that I was trying to schedule with about 15 other people to do this thing. Okay. I'm hoping it only will take about an hour. Um, okay. But at the same time, you know, if, if there could be, you know, if the three of you could, could be at that meeting, you know, I can miss one. Okay. Yeah. So it might be simpler that way. And if, if something happens while I'm meeting or if it ends early or something like that, I can join in. And, okay. So. With that, is that okay with Dylan and Hallie? Is that all right? Are you yeah. available? Yeah, Dylan? Okay. If that's all right with you, Doug, we can schedule it for the sixth and just yeah. do something. Yeah. Quick. And I think Gaston yeah. has indicated that that's okay with him too. Yeah. So okay. You know, all right. Great. And then Steve we'll meet. His, if Steve gets his copies of the sort of final drafts. Okay. You know, I'll look them over, and if there's any comment, I'll send it out. Okay. I mean, we send it just to you and to him because you know don't want to violate open meeting, but uh, open meeting law. But but I can review that before that, so that you guys have any thoughts I might have. Okay, great. And so then we'd be meeting on the sixth and the twentieth of October, and that keeps us on schedule. And Steve, that's fine. You don't have any huge things. I know renewals are coming up. But... The sixth and the twentieth, I think. That should probably work. And then that would put us in November. Oh. November is a more important one. Um, yeah, that's November 3rd and 17th. Does that work? Oh, because Thanksgiving is the 24th. So that would, so we could probably, if we needed to. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back. We're going to be meeting in a week anyway. So we'll circle back. I think okay. I wasn't really, uh, my head was not quite in renewal schedule mode, but I think December is generally more important because, um, December. Things have to be voted. Yeah, they have to get the applications and they have to be signed <laughs> in November. Okay. Um, God help you if you sign it in October, not valid. Okay. <laughs> That's the actual state law. But um, December is when we have to approve it. And sometimes people can be late getting us things back. So um, I will, um, we'll, yeah, we'll think about that for next time. I'm going to be meeting with Susan on Tuesday to go over the renewal schedule of everything. So, okay, great. Is there anything else? Any other topics? No? If none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. 
Thanks, Dylan. Um, let's take a roll call out of here. Dylan. Aye. Uh, Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And I vote aye. Four to zero with one absent. We're adjourned at 6, 11 p.m. Thank you. And Dylan, when, when did you um, come in for the record? I think I missed a minute. Uh, I think it was 6.30. Six, uh, oh, sorry, 5.30. 5.30. Five thir five All righty. Thank okay. you. All right. All right. Thanks, I everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. See you.